All right, so we're going to see if we can put this all together. We're going to do the second derivative analysis, which is we're going to find the intervals of concavity and find the inflection points. Now, this assumes there are any. There might not be uh, intervals where it's concave down. There might not be any inflection points. But if there are any inflection points, then we're going to find them and determine those. So, uh, second derivative analysis requires, of course, the second derivative. So derivative here is 1 minus derivative of sine is cosine, and the second derivative is the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of negative, now the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but we want the opposite of that, so the derivative of negative cosine is sine of x. Also notice we're only working on the open interval, the open interval from 0 to 2 pi. So the next piece is to find all the critical values. Well, type 1. This, I really hope, is becoming familiar now. Type 1 is where the second derivative is equal to 0. Type 2 is where the second derivative does not exist. And since this is a sine function, we know that there are none because this is a sine function. But we will have a type 1 critical value. We're going to set this function to 0. Uh, well, we know sine of x is equal to 0 at 0 pi and 2 pi, but we're only in the interval not including 0 and not including 2 pi. So the only solution in the interval of interest, this implies x is equal to 0 because we know the graph of the sine curve. Right? The only place that equals 0 is at 0. Right? So the only cut value we have is at pi. But remember, we're only working with the interval from 0 to 2 pi, so we don't care what happens in this piece, and we don't care what happens in that piece, only what's happening in this interval of interest. So now the next piece is select representatives from each of those regions. Well, the simplest, I think, is probably going to be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. All right? Evaluate the second derivative at each of those values. So we need the second derivative evaluated at pi over 2, and we need the second derivative evaluated at 3 pi over 2. Do not use the cut values, use the representative values. So this is, well, I need, so the second derivative is just sine. So we want sine of pi over 2, and we want sine of 3 pi over 2. Uh, sine of pi over 2, we know that to be 1, which is greater than 0, so the curve is concave up. We know sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, which is less than 0, so we know the curve is concave down. So we can state our solutions here. We know that the function is concave up on the interval from 0 to pi. Zero, I'm sorry, 0 to pi, and we know f is concave down on the interval from pi to 2 pi. Right. Now, the next question, do we have any inflection points? Well, the only, the only possibility is if the concavity has changed, and in fact, yes, it has there is potentially, potentially, an inflection point at pi. Since we know this function is defined everywhere, we know there actually is going to be that inflection point. So we use the original function, the original function itself, the original function to find the coordinates of pi comma uh, f of pi. So there is inflection point at 
I'm going to use f of pi, the original function, the original function. Notice, nowhere in the second derivative analysis do we use the first derivative except as a stepping stone to get to the second. Use the second derivative to analyze the concavity, and then you're done with it. You go back to the original function to find the inflection points, and the inflection point is at, we need x minus sine of x. Well, in this case, x is trying to be pi minus sine of pi, which is pi minus zero pi. So there's an inflection point at pi comma 